Hello everybody, I'm Clifford Sunday, the Pop Song Professor, and welcome to my YouTube channel where we explain song lyrics. Today we're talking about Gundabad by Jay Joseph. The guy is just about to drop his first EP, and this was his first single off of the EP. It says, uh, what, what, the record, the name of the record is His Mom's Basement, so apparently he's making this at his parents' house, he has some music recording stuff, this is not like, he's not signed or anything, this, this is him being a indie start-out artist, just like any indie start-out artist. And this song is very interesting interesting for a few reasons because you kind of expect somebody from the Joseph family because we've heard you know raps from other Joseph brothers you might have heard of before who it, they, they tend to come up with something that means something and is purposeful and tends to be just a little bit unnecessarily confusing sometimes which is part of why we like the music. Jay is following in those steps uh, but I think what felt so interesting about this is I think that that a lot of cynical people would listen to this first track and expect it to sound very 21 Pilots-esque, and in some ways it reminded me of Lane Boy a little bit, especially how the tempo like regularly changes during the bridge slash outro at the end, but it felt a lot more like purposefully chaotic, like there was a lot of like intense energy, like you didn't know what was going to come next, and it really felt like he was trying to define his own unique genre, and I very much appreciated that. And I think that that is going to make sense in the context of what the first verse talks about, because I'm going to go ahead and have to admit that I am not 100% sure what the song is about, but I have a few theories that I think are backed up with evidence. So let's go ahead and start with verse one. I just might be pitiful, but won't live unoriginal. I will die with syllables penciled in this thin three punch whole paper, save it for later, read it back again, three months old, but when the best runs cold and I do what I'm told, that's when I know that I've grown too old. And I hesitate on the best because in the song it really sounds like beat, but in the lyrics that he posted to YouTube, it says best, and I know A and S are really close on the keyboard, so I'm, I'm a little bit curious whether or not that's a typo. Especially because when the best runs cold, it, grammatically it would be when the best run cold. But really, this song does something that we've, we've heard in in many songs from many artists before, like basically, I'm gonna be original, and I'm gonna do that by expressing myself, and I'm going to express myself using lyrics, and he's, he even describes the type of paper he's, he's using, and what's really good about that is that he's using very specific detailed imagery, which is something a lot of artists don't do. They just say, hey, I wrote it down. Instead, he's describing the type of paper, so you can imagine him there with this ratty old notebook, like, going through and putting these lyrics down, and it, it helps to draw that mental picture. And he's saying that he's gonna be original and do his own thing when the beat runs cold, or the best runs cold, and I do what I'm told, that's when I know that I've grown too old. So I don't want to just go along with everybody else. I want to express myself and be myself, you know, as a young person does. So I'm pretty confident about that stanza, but then we move into the chorus. Used to tell myself that I would never be there. When I close my eyes, my thoughts keep telling me lies. Go expose myself for the sake of repair. Gun to bat on my mind behind enemy lines. Now, there is a lot of stuff going on here, people. The third line is probably the easiest. Go expose myself for the sake of repair really feels like he's talking about the songwriting process that is a, a very common idea of, of self-therapy administered through the writing of lyrics or creating of art of any kind but it gets just trickier in every other respect. Used to tell myself that I would never be there. Like, I am not going to let that bad thing happen to me. What is that bad thing? Hmm, do we really know? Probably not yet, but he's kind of like hinting at it. When I close my eyes, my thoughts keep telling me lies. And so, I, everybody's experienced that kind of conflict mentally, that, that internal dissonance. I think this is right, but I feel like this should be right, even though I know it's not, but I, I don't want to do that, but maybe this, and you just go back and forth and it, it just just, you start to fall apart. And then the final line, the hardest part, going on my mind behind enemy lines, it could be like the lines of a song, but that feels a little bit too ham-fisted maybe, but Gundabad on my mind behind enemy's line. What is Gundabad? Well, that one is a tricky one to answer because Essentially, I have I have searched that up. I've looked at potential anagrams of the word to see if the letters rearranged to something else. And the the literally only significant thing that I or any of the other people's explanations who I read have found uh, is that it sounds like a Lord of the Rings reference. Gundabad is a mountain that was one of the I think it was actually where the first dwarf in Lord of the Rings lore woke up, and then over the, in the first age, and then the first, the second, and I think the third age, particularly the second and the third, it became like an orc, like, 
it's a mountain, okay? At the top of the Moria, the mountains of Moria, which if you've watched The Hobbit, the Gundabad is kind of like where all of Azog and Bolg's orcs are coming from. That's that's in the movie. I don't know that that's necessarily what happens in the book. I don't think it is. But it's like this stronghold of evil. He's got Gundabad on his mind behind enemy lines. So he's he's where he shouldn't be, right? He's, he's either trying to accomplish a mission or he's stuck back there. He's probably captured in some way, struggling with that internal dissonance maybe. Why the Gundabad? bad reference? Well, first off, we don't know that it is Lord of the Rings necessarily. Second, it it's got us talking, right? It's got people thinking and uh, and maybe it holds some significance for him. Even if it's not about Lord of the Rings, it, it sounds like even the sound of the word is very interesting. If it's not about Lord of the Rings, though, if it's not a reference to that into like a stronghold of enemy forces, then I really don't have any theories for it at that point. So if you have an idea, I would love to hear what you, what you have to say. In the meantime, I'm going to go with the Lord of the Rings reference theory. And I think that the, the stanza that follows kind of backs that up. Give you nothing back. Stay away from gun to bad. And that's, it sounds really cool when he says it. Stay away from gun to bad. So it is this dangerous place, which fits with the Lord of the Rings idea. When you're low, broke, chain smoke, feel like you can't come from under that. Chain smoke is interesting. And I think that some people might have some, some notions about why Jay might be talking about chain smoking, uh, but we're not going to get too far into maybe what's the first thing on your mind. Um, he's really saying when you're in a bad place, you're not going to get anything back from gun to bad. Like, don't give to gun to bad. Don't go there. And it's, it seems to be places behind enemy lines. So it seems to be a dangerous place. And then we have the next cigarette mention here, which is interesting because it's starting to become a theme. Burns just like a cigarette, but it's far less intimate. Less intimate than a cigarette, but burns like it. It's like a riddle. It is like... It, <laughs> It's, uh, it's not an easy one to figure out, guys. Those who use their innocence as a privilege, the thrill of it, but you can find a better dope to fill in your pocket, get an outlet and cock it, make a craft and yeah, people will knock it. So he's saying you can find a better dope to fill in your pocket, which makes him th it sound like he's talking about drugs. We've had the chain smoking reference, we've had the cigarette reference, and he's saying a better dope, which is a reference for marijuana. Um, he's saying instead of doing some kind of drug, maybe maybe this is what he's saying, this is, this is a working theory. Um, get an outlet and go give it a shot. Make a craft, something that you craft and build, like, you know, something you put together. And yeah, people will knock it, but he's implying that that's okay. Then we go down to the, the breakdown, which I think is probably the, the actual bridge. Highs have got me down, but I'll just stick around. Sober in the morning, another reference to substance use. Cuts from falling down, and we get into the hook where he does this, like, this crazy speeding up thing again and again and again. Too high when you want to put your feet down. Too high when you want to put your feet down. Too high when you want to put your feet down. Drop, drop, drop. And you can hear it from the seats now. There is a lot to break down here. This is a confusing song, and it's also his only song. And something that I have learned after having explained, you know, over a thousand songs myself is that you really don't start to get a feel for what an artist is talking about until you've heard multiple songs from them. So what we're going to have to settle for is a few different theories. One of the first theories is that this is primarily about internal turmoil, staying away from the place the bad thoughts are coming from and just trying to use creating something as an outlet, all right? The second theory, and keep in mind, you can mix and match these theories and, and take half of one and half of another and put it here. The second theory is that this could have a lot to do with sort of like an anti-drug message, okay? So we have references to chain smoking, the cigarette, the dope, the highs, the sober in the morning, too high when you wanna put your feet down, Etc. Etc. So gun to bad could be kind of this metaphor for drug use that's that's stronger than cigarettes. Those are my two main theories, and honestly, I think that it's kind of a combination of both. I think he starts talking about the the writing and the self-expressing, and then he kind of changes into yeah, like like guys, this is way better than than going to something else that could potentially harm you. To gun to bad, where he literally says uh, gives you nothing back. But keep in mind. This is all just a theory. We're going to hear more about the kind of topics he wants to tackle, what shows up in his music, how he treats metaphors when we hear from his EP. I personally am excited to see where he goes with this, and if the rest of his songs are as thoughtful and musically interesting as this one, then I think he is going to be releasing some really cool songs pretty soon.
soon. Two quick things for you guys. Down in my description, I've got a link to a theory Google form where you can submit song theories about songs that you would like me to explain, and I'll check those out and potentially attribute the theory to you in a video soon. And then second, I've also got this super cool podcast called Obsessed. I've been obsessed with working on recently. The next episode is gonna be about Rubik's Cubes, like speed cubing, and the last one is about true crime. Hope that you guys get the chance to check it out. Um, I feel like it's something that I've uh, learned so much from Pop Song Professor and I've been able to put it into something that, that I'm super proud of the production and just the skills that I've been able to learn and to be able to put into that. So at the same time, it's fun, good stories. We hear from real people who are obsessed with things and, and it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.